Hi everyone. So the theme for May is going to be working on our brain health, helping improve brain fog, memory issues. So why is it so important that we walk every day or pick something that's going to really keep us active when it comes to your brain and avoiding, um, you know, dementia, brain fog, memory loss, all those things that quite frankly, I don't want to have as I grow older and I'm already experiencing some brain fog. So it's really getting me into this. So the first thing is because walking, walking, not even any other uh, exercise can help grow new brain cells. So um, studies uh, like this one that came out of Chapel Hill in University of North Carolina um, said that moderately paced walks can stimulate the release of the protein called BDNF. That stands for brain-derived neutrotrophic factor. Um, you know, this BDNF is a key to um, the survival of the neurons in your brains and generating new ones, which is so important for memories and having a thought reach the next pathway and neuron to have the next thought and to be able to analyze something in your brain, make calculations, etc. So um, it's really exciting that they found that aerobic exercise like walking, so brisk walking with deep breathing, um, can help facilitate the growth of new brain neurons. I just think that's so exciting because that does not cost any money. You don't have to join a gym, um, just throw some comfortable shoes on and go out for a brisk walk. If you live in an area where you can't walk, right? What did generations of people do? They would walk in the malls or walk in the stores. There, you could always find somewhere. Um, I, what I've even done is if the weather's not so great or I don't know, it was too late at night, you know, I'll walk around the outside of my house, like through the backyard to the front yard and, and just briskly get that done. So no excuse, right? You can only always find somewhere to walk and I think um, we'll see if the study says the minimum amount of time, but I always say if you're new to walking and you haven't started yet, you know, fine. Start with five minutes a day. Once you're comfortable with that and your body's worked up to it, you move to 10 minutes and then to 15 and then to 20. And we really, as the goal, should be walking a, min a minimum of 30 minutes a day. That's been studied in the past, that that is the, um, the goal for, um, you know, getting heart rate up that much. So what else does walking do for the brain? Well, when you're walking, you do breathe better. You take deeper breaths. You're not sitting back in shallow breathing, which we know, uh, you know, if, you, if you're ill or whatnot can lead to pneumonia if you're not doing deep breathing. And so when you're walking, the brain uses three times as much oxygen uh, for healthy neuron function as muscles do. Um, so I'm sorry, that's not with walking, that's just the brain uses three times as much oxygen for healthy neuron function as muscles do. So you can see how when you're walking and increasing your oxygen level, that is helping your brain, right? Um, so what does that do? That increases our creativity, um, our cognition, the ability to do certain simple math tasks and um, you know, analyzation like we talked about, analyzing I mean. And it even says getting up from your desk and taking a short, brisk walk, 15 or 20 minutes, can actually help trigger ideas and creativity. So, you know, if you're having a slump at work and you just can't figure out the solution to your problem, just get up and take a walk and deep breathe, right? I know some of this sounds like simple, but I think we kind of forget what this can actually do for the brain. So the other thing is when you walk, um, blood flow is increased to the brain, which really... Um, helps create this flood of your feel-good neurotransmitters like your serotonin, your dopamine, your endorphins. Those are all um, released more when you're getting into some kind of exercise. And again, walking, right? Um, also, those that are low in vitamin D, you get out and walk in the sunshine, here comes summer, that's a great way to get your vitamin D3, right? Because, you know, if you're fair-skinned, you know, you need about 15 minutes. You know, if you have more melanin or you're very, very dark skinned, it's, it goes up to 30 minutes. Well, that's a perfect amount of walk time. So, um, and then the, the study showed that um, walking can actually decrease the risk of cognitive decline. So they had participants in the study walk uh, more than 4,000 steps a day. So again, you have your little step counter on. Um, usually at work, just anecdotally, I, 
I hit about an average of 6,000 steps a day. That's without extra walking. That's just my regular work day, 6,000 steps. So um, that would really benefit me <laughs> to do some more walking because, yeah. Um, so they saw that those that worked more than 4,000 steps per day had a healthier brain, um, better memory, learning and cognitive function than those who did not. Um, so the brain region that actually shrinks when you don't get in regular exercise, like walking, is called the hippocampus. And um, this actually leads to impaired memory and an increased risk of dementia. So get out there and walk, right? Uh, another point of the study was that walking may decrease brain damaging stress. So um, they th they saw that like, you know, if you have a loved one with cancer or you're going through a terrible chronic illness or you've lost a loved one or even a move or a loss of a job, that is considered um, a stressful event. And depending on the situation, maybe a traumatic event, right? Well you know, chronic stress like this can lead to higher cortisol levels and it actually affects the brain and um, reduces um, a good memory, attention span, and cognitive flexibility. So what's the antidote? You know what I'm going to say, walking. Uh, so because it reduces cortisol, reduces stress levels, especially if you go in an area that you think is beautiful, like um, a nature path or along the beach or in the woods or, you know, somewhere safe, obviously, but somewhere that just you know, you're in that area, like your favorite park, or there's flowers, and you know, whatever your thing is. Maybe it's a shopping mall, right? So, uh, yeah, so think about that. And uh, so it's interesting because it shifts the brain into the state of relaxation that you don't get when you're stationary watching Netflix, sitting at a desk. You don't reap these benefits. You know, we live in such a digital world now. I do get concerned of generations of people just on the screen all the time. And or just not getting outside and walking. So, you know, and if someone has a lunch hour, I mean, they can just use their lunch hour to go. Uh, so here they talk about um, elevated cortisol levels may damage cognition. We talked about that and contribute to Alzheimer's disease. Uh, according to a 2019 review of studies in Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience, this study showed that just a 20 minute walk has been shown to reduce stress and enhance brain function. How amazing is that? Now I wanted to try to find if I could find some a little bit more in-depth science behind this. Let me see if this article, no, that article would not let me get into it. Um, well, let's see, how long is how long is this video? How long are we? Do we have time to go into more of the science? Oh, this is already hitting almost eight minutes. Well, let's see if there's anything interesting in this article. So Kind of we talked about it. Oh, uh, so this study was talking about that regular exercise, and in this case, it's gonna be walking because I feel like that's everyone can do that. Um, the part of the brain that improves is the white matter. Uh, and they've actually seen that um, the white matter, which connects and supports cells in the brain, can actually remodel itself after exercise or walking. So you're actually changing and helping your brain improve. Um, those though, that remain sedentary and are not gonna join all of us on our goal of walking every day in May. And then, you know, let's say in June, we'll walk every day, but we're gonna add something else in and we'll have some science behind it too. But our goal is we're gonna walk every day in May, okay? And then I want you to comment below like what you're experiencing and, and what you're feeling and what your thoughts of this are. And I guess this video more pertains to people that just haven't started taking care of themselves, it's never too late. That's what I'm trying to say, it's never too late. Uh, so white matter of the brain connects and supports cells in the brain. We talked about that, okay. Uh, in those who remain sedentary, the white matter tends to shrink and fray. That sounds terrible. Oh my gosh. If that's not motivation to get off your desk, oh my goodness. So, um, so apparently we've learned that the brain is really malleable and open to change and improvement. And really until the, this is crazy, until the late 1990s, most researchers thought the human brain was physically fixed, couldn't be changed and molded to improve um, after early childhood. Isn't it amazing that we are st still learning? <laughs> We're learning that we don't know everything, but that you can improve your brain. That's amazing, especially those that went under trauma when they were children. It's like, yeah, just 
I guess that is why exercise, I mean, I always feel better after exercise and I feel a, a better sense of peace and all that. And I get it, like after a hard day and everything hurts and I just wanna lay down, like I'm gonna remember this study and be like, no, because I just wanna have a healthy brain as I age, right? So regular exercise also leads to greater brain volume. Oh my gosh, so think of like a baggie full of water. Remember in school, like what's the volume of this bag of water? Like, so you put your brain on a scale. What's the volume of that? You can increase the volume with exercise. Uh, uh, yes, we're gonna do that. Um, this is crazy. They did um, a mammalian study in rodents and they saw that when they had them running, on the track, they pumped out three to four times as many new brain cells as uh, inactive animals, while in people, uh, regular exercise led to greater brain volume. Okay, so there was like a, a, well, I guess that means that we are, I don't know if we're developing new brain cells. I don't know if that's what this is saying. Um, however, it says the research shows our brains retain lifelong plasticity, changing as we do, including in response to how we exercise. Okay, so that does make sense to me because have you ever known, like remember in a former video I said COVID broke our brains. That virus, you remember how bad the headache was? And that was just with the real virus, not any kind of, um, you know, stuff people put in their bodies. Um, and I remember having brain fog after having COVID. And so what was the antidote doing a lot of, you know, I was doing a lot of, natural and anti-inflammatories, eating really healthy, trying to lose weight and exercise and getting sunshine. And my brain does feel better. I feel like it's recovered. So not just illness, but um, traumatic injuries, uh, traumatic brain injuries, um, abuse, whether it's adult or childhood abuse, uh, depression, you know, all those things, you know, depressed people, some tend to be less motivated. They just stay inside. They sleep a lot. It's not good for your brain, right? You know, and I think of all the assisted livings and nursing homes, and um, I know some of them offer, you know, occupational therapy, physical therapy, but really how important is it to get everyone out there walking in the sunshine for 15, 20 minutes? And years and years and years ago, um, I worked in a nursing home and yeah, we weren't taking them outside for walks, but I did not know any of this. We were just giving a lot of medication. Yeah, that was that. So, um, so anyway, past studies of brain plasticity focused on gray matter. Uh, and then, um, so let's scoop down here, but let's see, research has now looked at the white matter of the brain. That's where the brain's wiring is in so many words. Um, and then we have some fat wrapped nerve fibers known as axons, and that's why cholesterol is so important. Where do you think that fat comes from? It comes from cholesterol. That's why I'm not a huge fan of like statins unless it's absolutely life-saving and necessary because it depletes the fat that protects our brain. Anyway, fat wrapped nerve fibers known as axons, uh, white matter connects neurons and is essential for brain health. Okay, so what else? Um, anything that we didn't talk about in this study? I am just looking through. Do, do, do. Nope, not really. I think we went over anything else I didn't know. Let's see. Dr. Agnushka Brzezinski and her college, uh, colleagues did this study and said um, dancing would produce greater white matter and cognitive improvements than walking, she says, since dancing entails more learning and practice, but walking was more potent suggesting that aerobic exercise by itself matters most for white matter health. See, it's, you just gotta walk. Uh, so here the study said the dancers spent some of their time each session watching the instructors and not moving much. So that probably affected their results. Okay, yeah, cause that makes sense. Um, so maybe that's why they got the disparity. We're walking, you're not learning how to walk. You already know how to just get out there and walk. I kind of like to listen to music or something very uplifting when you're walking, because again, I think that might just help lower cortisol up the endorphins. Um, and then here it said the study participants who were over age 60 um, and were inactive in the past uh, were studied and, um, and that, that's where they saw these benefits. It said, it remains unclear whether younger people would benefit because they didn't look at the younger group. But of course it would. If it's gonna improve someone 60 and up, of course it's gonna have benefits. But here's the thing, with younger people, they don't need to just walk. They can handle 
the hour-long aerobics class or, you know, the hot yogas and climbing up the hill and down the hill. Like, you know, the workouts I used to be able to do, I can't do anymore. I used to, there's a mountain near us, um, Piestawa Peak. Um, I used to be able to ride my bike there and hike that mountain every afternoon. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> my body's like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. Nope. So I just love that walking can have, um, you know, and I'm not even talking about weight loss and muscle gain. We're just talking about brain health. So I think that is really exciting. And okay, so that's the plan for May. We're going to walk every day. And um, tomorrow we will talk about another topic to improve brain health. Um, oh, side note, colored my hair. <laughs> Thank God this is a temporary color because it turned out really inky. But it's a washout, so I'm hoping, hoping it um, kind of lightens up here a little bit. All right, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.